If you're looking to pursue a career in aviation like me, you're getting your category one medical is really the most important thing that you need to do before you start training. But there are a whole bunch of issues surrounding that right now in Canada. And let's find a little bit more about where you can do it, how you can do it, and how you can get it quickly. Hello my friends, welcome back to Late Departure. I am Adam and I'm continuing on my epic journey here to become a commercial pilot. And to do so, I'm doing all kinds of stuff from searching for flight schools to, I, of course, getting my medical done, which finally happened. So I'm very happy. I finally got my category one medical in the mail a few days ago. And I have to tell you, it was probably the most difficult part of getting ready to fly besides of course finding a school and a good instructor and the reason for this is well partially possibly because of the pandemic but also of course there are a whole bunch of things we need to consider we need to think about which clinic should we go to are the cheaper ones better or more expensive ones better uh, which ones are faster and really this all depends on the doctors at the clinics and ultimately this depends on how busy the clinics are, how busy the doctors are, whether the doctors have the connections to, for example, if you need some extra checks or things like that, if they can actually get you in touch with, for example, neurologists or any specialists that you might need to satisfy all of the requirements to get your category one medical permit. Now for me, I was just renewing my category one medical license after about 15 years or so. Now, Technically, when you're renewing a category one, from what I've heard, you can actually just go into a doctor. If you pass the exam, the doctor can stamp it right there and you're good to go for another year. Now, for someone like me who's over 30 years old, you know, I have to do this every year and every two years. I need to have some extra checks done, like they have to do uh, an EKG. They have to check my heart and they have to check to make sure that I'm healthy and that I'm not going to die anytime soon because I'm an old, old man or whatever the heck it is. And because of these extra tests, my medical exam took a little bit longer than I was hoping. So I had to go in, I had to book a few exams at some hospitals, but overall it didn't take too long. What really took long was the processing of the information at Transport Canada. And this is really one of the things that's hurting a lot of uh, prospective pilots right now, especially people who do not already have a category one permit. So for those of you who are planning on starting to fly soon, you really want to consider applying for that category one permit as soon as possible because while well, people who have a category one can renew it right away, uh, in my case, I got it in about two months or so. People, whether they're local or international who are applying for the category one medical license for the first time are reporting anywhere from six months, sometimes even to a year to wait for these things to be processed. And apparently what's happening right now is because of COVID, they don't have as much staff at Transport Canada, and they're really struggling trying to process all of the papers. And especially now, like you've seen from my other videos, we have schools, we have thousands of flight students starting this year. We have thousands of flight students who probably started last year. And as this all builds up, they have a ton of paperwork to deal with. Another thing that you probably have noticed is because of the pandemic, we have a lot of people who are working from home. So not as much work is getting done that usually happens. Overall, it's just not a great time. So if you want to pursue this career in aviation and you want to get your Cat 1, which by the way, I would highly recommend. Some people are just getting their Category 3s, which takes less time. Like I think for most people, you can get a Category 3 in any time from two weeks to four weeks. However, the Category 3 it won't actually be good enough for your commercial license. To be a commercial pilot, you need a category one. So if you hear someone at a flight school, and this happened to me, some people said to me, oh, no problem, you know what? We can start you really soon. Just go get a category three license. Well, what happens if I get a category three, and let's say I'm applying for my category one for the first time, and I do my flight training for six months, I spend $20,000, and then I realize, uh-oh, I have a health problem that means I can't get a category one, which means I can't become a commercial pilot, which means I just spent $20,000 for a career that I actually can't do. 
that would be so terrible. And I really don't want that happening to any of you. That's something that could just really ruin your day to say the least. So to sum up, I got my Cat1 medical license. Woo! I'm very happy about that. And two, make sure that you go out and if you're serious about getting into aviation, even if you're still looking at schools, apply for that category one medical permit as soon as you possibly can. Uh, I don't know how you would apply for it if you're outside of Canada, but find a way, get it done as soon as possible because maybe you're not coming in Canada for three months. Your medical license might not be ready even after three months. So get it registered now. This is super important. So I started recording this video for the purpose of reviewing the IME clinic, the immigration medical exam clinic that I went to for my aviation medical. And I got so carried away with uh, talking about how important it is to get your medical exam done as soon as possible because of the delays that I totally forgot to review the clinic. So I'm actually here on a different day. And let me uh, just go into that really quickly here. So. Uh, the IME clinic overall, so they are quite a bit more expensive than some of the other ones. It costs $200 to get your exam done there. However, the time that it took to book was actually fairly short, especially considering all of the backlogs and everything that's happening with COVID here. So overall, I was happy with the reservation process. It was easy. You could go onto the website, reserve it quite easily. And when I went in, it did take a while. And one thing I have to say is uh, Dr. Tour's office there is quite busy. There's a lot of people going through there, no matter what time of day you go. But on the other side, I also dropped in on a couple occasions and I was able to just uh, either talk with him or get the questions answered that I was trying to get answered. So it's, it's strange. It's busy, but you can still do stuff there. <laughs> I don't know what you want to make of that, but that was just kind of the situation that it was. And in terms of Dr. Tour himself, he was super kind, very professional. He, he knew that right now it's, everything's backlogged at Transport Canada and, and he said that he would try to get everything done as quickly as possible. Now, the examination itself went really well. He was very, very good. He was thorough. He did everything. Uh, overall examination was great. Now, the only downside that I had was after the examination, I thought, because he said at the examination that he was going to submit the documents to Transport Canada right away, but I did get a phone call from him a week later, said that he was then submitting the documents, and I was a little confused. So I'm not sure if he submitted them then or if he submitted them a week later. If he did it a week later, which could possibly happen, because like I said, his office is extremely busy, uh, it is really unfortunate because I was trying to get that aviation medical done as soon as I possibly could. Now, one other thing is I actually had to go in for an additional exam. And for that exam, I needed to be referred to uh, a neurologist. And he told me he'd refer me to a neurologist and said that he had contacted some people. And I waited a while. And unfortunately, I didn't hear from him. And actually, I had to go in to see my, my medical doctor, my family doctor about something. And I mentioned it to him. And my family doctor was able to get me a booking by the next day with the neurologist. So uh, I, I'm not sure what happened there. Perhaps it was the same thing. You know, Dr. Tour is very busy. Maybe it took him like a week or two to, to contact the neurologist or something like that. But that was a little unfortunate. So like I said, it's overall, the experience was good. I, I definitely go there again. But if I was in a rush, for example, if I was doing this again and I needed to get my category one as soon as possible, I probably wouldn't go there. So if you're in that situation and, and you need to get it and maybe it's your first time applying for your category one, uh, it might be delayed. And then again, I would say this is probably due to COVID. It's due to, you know, understaffing, overbooking, and it just happens to be the case. But I think next time I probably will try a few different doctors over my next uh, renewals just to see what the process is like and see if it's any different. But like I said, overall, if you're just renewing it, if you have your category one, yeah, by all means, go to Dr. Tour. I think he could definitely help you get it stamped, get you ready out the door, uh, back into the plane as soon as possible. And really that's, that's super important. All right, thank you again for joining me on my late departure here. I really hope that you guys listen to this advice because I want you to be able to get up and fly. And it's already late May, it's almost June. This year's peak flying season, it's already started and it's going to be over in a few months. So, you know, realistically, you want to at least be able to be ready to start 
next spring at the earliest. And if you want to start next spring and you want to pursue that dream of being a commercial pilot, apply for that Cat 1 as soon as possible. Oh, mandatory plane break. So until next time, stay healthy, stay happy, stay safe, fly your best if you're up flying, and remember, it's never too late. See you next time.